Jeremiah chapter 42. Then all the captains of the forces, now they ran Ishmael out. Gadaliah has been killed. And the captain of the forces and John Hanan, I know his name is different every time we read it. He's the one who's rescued the people. The son of Kariah and Jazaniah, the son of Hoshaniah, and all the people from the least, even unto the greatest, came near. And he said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee, our supplications be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God. Did you get that? The Lord thy God, not my God. So already you see the trouble happening. Even for all this remnant, for we are left but a few of many, as thy eyes do behold us. <clears throat> that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we walk, and the thing that we may do. And Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, those other kids saying, Jeremiah the prophet tells you who he is. I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God. Look at the pronouns. According to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then said Jeremiah to the Lord be true and a faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all the things which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. So everything that God says we're going to do. This happened back in Exodus 19. They told Moses, everything that God says we will do. No, you won't. Whether it be good, whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord, our God. <laughs> oh, things are switched. To whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. They're buttering God up. You know, if, he, if he's now all of a sudden our God, he will tell us your good things. It came past after ten days that the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Then called he Janana, Johanna the son of Kira, and all the captains of forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said unto them, you know, this is what split the nation between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. I think he said, come back in three days, and after three days, you know. He said, and thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom ye sent me to present your supplications before him. If conditional. That word if in the Bible destroys the Calvinistic system. Because if Calvin was correct, there would be no if. Verse 13, there would be no if, if there was Calvin. God would say, you're going to do it, and that's it. But Calvin's wrong. God gives him in verse 10 or verse 13, if, conditional. If ye will still abide in this land, Judah, then I will build you and not pull you down. I will plant you. See, it's the same message, isn't it? If you give into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, I'll take care of you and not pluck you up. 
For I, God, repented me of the evil that I have done unto you. Look at repentance there, and that's not of sin. That's the destruction, the famine, the war, the death, the captivity. God said, you know what? It's enough is enough. I'll turn from it. I will do good. That's what man is supposed to do. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon. Now, why would they be afraid of the king of Babylon? Ishmael just killed the governor. Word's going to get back. Of whom ye are afraid. See, God knows who you're afraid. Be not afraid of him, Nebuchadnezzar. Save the Lord. For I am with you to save you. Look, there's a saving of not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I will plant you in the see the land. Verse 10. That's the salvation of the Jew. If you'll stay in this land and obey what I tell you, their salvation is not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're not Christians. The land is the Jewish heaven. And to deliver you from his hand, Nebuchadnezzar. I will show you mercies unto you. Ye may have mercy upon you. And cause you to return to your own land. And you stay in Judah. And Judah was divided between Benjamin, Simeon. In Judah and in individual cities but if okay here's the other conditional cause if ye say we will not dwell in this land neither obey the voice of the Lord your God your God look at the pronouns saying no but we will go into the land of Egypt which has been forbidding all the way since they come out of Egypt. The Jews have been forbidden since coming out of Egypt, coming out by the law. Don't go back. Where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger of, bre hunger of bread. That's what they were crying in the wilderness. We ain't got no food. We ain't got no water. We, you know, let's go back. You know, we remember the onions and the leeks and that all. But you forgot your babies were being killed. <clears throat> forgot that, didn't you? You forgot the law that said, don't go back. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, the remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord, the host of God of Israel. If you wholly set your faces to enter in Egypt and go to sojourn there. Now, sojourn is a temporary dwelling. You don't go there and move. Sojourn would be likened to a hotel or a motel or an inn. You don't sojourn and go build a house. Then it shall come to pass that the sword that ye feared shall overtake you in the land of Egypt in famine, where ye shall be afraid, shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. So what you're afraid of, if you go against God, God will cause it to happen, and you'll die. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. And none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. So there's, stay here and obey the voice of God. Leave, go into Egypt, and rebel against God. There's no other ground. There's heaven or there's hell. For thus saith the Lord, the host of God of Israel, as my anger and my fury has been poured out forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem with the Babylonian army, 
This is post-exilic. This is after the, the captivity. This is after the destruction of Jerusalem. So shall my fury be poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Egypt. So, listen, if you go into Egypt, everything that's happened here is going to happen again. An astonishment and a curse and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, go ye not into. Look at the, look at God in Jeremiah. It's don't go. And know certainly that I have admonished you this day. Ye have disassembled in your hearts. When you sent me unto the Lord your God, that'd be Jeremiah saying it. You sent me to God. Pray for us and the Lord your God. Our God, excuse me, the Lord our God. Well, <laughs> Jeremiah, they said thy God, not our God. According to all that the Lord, he says our God, they said thy God. Go back to the beginning of chapter 42. Um, this is verse 42, I mean chapter 42, verse 2. Pray for us unto the Lord thy God. Verse 3, that the Lord thy God. Jeremiah is not verbatim quoting him saying, listen, he's our God. Verse 20, for ye dissembled your hearts when ye sent me unto the Lord your God. He's your God. Pray for us unto the Lord our God. That's my God too, Jeremiah is saying. According to all that the Lord our God shall say. God speaking to Jeremiah and speaking to the people. So declare unto us and we will do it. And now I have this day declared it to you. But ye have not obeyed the voice of your Lord your God. Already they're saying, no, we're going to Egypt. And God's already told Jeremiah. Nor anything for me, for the, for anything to which he has sent me unto you. That's that's you see, Jeremiah is also the church age today, and that's the problem with revivals. You get a spark of revival. The city of Jerusalem has been destroyed. All right, we want to do right. We want to do right. And then sin comes back. The insurrection comes back. And you fight against God. And you sin against God again. And then you go back and you take care of the insurrection. You And God gives you deliverance. And you tell us what God wants us to do. We're going to do it. Well, that's not what God said. And we're going to do what we're going to do no matter what God tells us. That's the book of Judges. Israel sinned. God sent the judge. They got right. The judge died. They went back into sin. God sent the judge. The judge delivered them. They, and when the judge died, they sinned. And, oh. and that's what's going to happen in the church age. God will give a deliverance. God will give an answer by the word. And then... After the week of revival is over, and the next following Sunday, and I know I've been in these church revivals, you got less people that were in two weeks before the revival. And they're doing the serene things. They're, 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 they're not listening to God. That's human nature. We are not in a Philadelphia church age when the revival shut the theaters down and the revival shut the bar rooms down. If you're going to have a biblical Holy Ghost revival, after
after two days of that revival. No, I'll tell you what. The next day after the last day of that revival, we'll drive around 10 miles of your church. And we'll count all the signs on the bar rooms closed due to revival. We'll look at all the empty liquor stores or package stores. We'll see the closed theaters that have given their buildings over to serving God and to preaching the gospel. That's what happened to revivals. That's what happened to Great Awakening. That's not going to happen during the Laodicean church age because the Laodicean church age is like Judah today. Oh, we're wonderful. We're great. How great we are. And how quick are you to go back and not listen to God? Oh, we'll listen to God. All right, God says stay in the land. No, no, we're not good. Bye. That's the church age today. Now therefore know certainly that ye shall die by sword. God has already told Jeremiah they're not going to listen. And I hear these church revivals. We're gonna have, I sit back and I'm the negative toe sore. I'm the guy who comes, we're going to have a revival. Things are going to be great. And I take a big 20-pound sledgehammer and slam it on your toe. They ain't going to happen. Oh, you're so negative. We're going to have a national revival in America. I take that 40-pound sledgehammer and say, BAM! Ah! 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 So what's wrong? You don't believe in a revival? No, I don't. Not in this day and age. I'll tell you why there's going to be no revival. I've been in Daytona Beach, I don't know how many years. And of all the Baptist churches, only Jehovah Witnesses have come to my door, except for COVID-19. And since COVID-19, I've gotten four letters from Jehovah Witnesses. Well, we're sorry, we can't come to your door. We're sending you a letter about our church. I've had one church come to our street ministry and he wanted to do things his own little way that was completely wrong he wanted to elevate his church I don't do that this is the last seen church aid there will be no revival not when you got perverted Bibles, screwed up music, and the people's hearts are not right. You're not going to get it. Oh, you'll get a revival of, you know, foot stomping, make me feel great, hallelujah, entertainment. <laughs> but it won't be holy. It'll be baloney. By pestilence in the place whether you desire to go and sojourn. Now, I know Pharaoh hasn't heard yet, but if I was Pharaoh, I would start getting, oh, don't, don't come. We've already been messed up by your God. But I'm going to tell you, God's already told Jeremiah. I'm going to tell you again, Lord willing, we get to the next chapters. They disobey God. As the Laodicean church disobeys God. Okay, they've got witnessing program where they're witnessing for the church. You got modern perverted Bibles. You got music that that honors the flesh and not God. And like I I said today in Sunday school in the last of seeing church, you got Jesus Christ standing outside a closed door in the church, and I said Satan's inside. Amen and clapping and having a good old time. There will be no revival.
And if there would be a revival amongst an individual who wants to do right, he's going to suffer, suffer persecution, and that persecution will come from Christians. You know how many Christians have stabbed me in the back, and I still go on fire for the Lord? You, uh, there, no revival. Forget it. Now, individual revival of a, of a person, maybe his family, maybe. An individual, okay. 